three, two. In this video, we're starting on the second page of Unit 4, Block 2. We're going to introduce in, in this block uh, general antiderivatives and specific antiderivatives and how to find them using some basic rules, some shortcut rules. So first of all, just understanding what do we mean when we say general antiderivative or specific antiderivative. So notice the notation here, first of all. We're going to write this integral symbol. We're going to integrate a function f of x dx. So this dx is saying integrating the function with respect to the variable x. Integrate f of x dx. The general antiderivative will be this capital F of x function plus c, where c is not known. You're actually going to write a plus c in your formula. It represents just a constant. A specific antiderivative is much the same. You're going to integrate a function f of x with respect to x, integrate with respect to x, integrate f of x dx. And again, you're going to get this capital F of x function plus a c, but this time with a specific antiderivative, you're going to actually solve for the value c. You're going to know the value c. c is an actual number. So just making some sense out of this here, let's suppose we have a function f of x equals 3x squared. So we know the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Right? So this function f of x, it is the derivative of x cubed, for example. So if you find the derivative of x cubed, you get 3x squared. So you might think of capital F of x as x cubed. And in fact, capital F of x equals x cubed is an example of a specific antiderivative of little f of x. Specifically, capital F of x passes through 0, 0. So again, f of x equals x cubed. Notice that's the same as saying capital F of x equals x cubed plus 0. Its derivative is little f of x equals 3x squared. So we can say the integral of 3x squared dx is x cubed. That's a specific antiderivative of 3x squared. As another example, we know the derivative of x cubed plus 7 is also 3x squared. Right? So capital F of x equals x cubed plus 7. So if we have a function x cubed plus 7, it's an example of a specific antiderivative of little f of x. And in this case, capital F of x passes through the point 0, 7. So again, if we start with capital F of x equals x cubed plus 7, its derivative is little f of x equals 3x squared. And now we can say an integral of 3x squared dx is x cubed plus 7. This is an example of a specific antiderivative of 3x squared. So x cubed was a specific antiderivative. x cubed plus 7 was a specific antiderivative. One more here. Derivative of x cubed minus 13 is also 3x squared. So if we start with capital F of x equals x cubed minus 13, the derivative is little f of x equals 3x squared. And now we're thinking, well, if I start with integrating 3x squared with respect to x, one example of a specific antiderivative would be x cubed minus 13. That is a specific antiderivative 
of 3x squared. Notice they all have something in common. One specific antiderivative was x cubed. Another specific antiderivative was x cubed plus 7. Another specific antiderivative was x cubed minus 13. They all have in common, back you go, stupid computer. They all have in common this x cubed. And in fact, the only thing that differs between these specific antiderivatives is the number you're adding at the end, the constant that's being added at the end. This first one was x cubed plus 0. The next one was x cubed plus 7. The next one was x cubed minus 13. And these are only examples. We could go on and on and on coming up with different examples of specific antiderivatives. In general, we would say, the antiderivative of 3x squared dx is x cubed plus some constant c. c could be any number, because when you find the derivative of x cubed plus a constant, its derivative will be 3x squared. The derivative of the constant is 0. So this is called the general antiderivative. If you are asked to find the general antiderivative, you're going to have a plus c in it because the derivative of a constant is 0. You will not be able to find the value of c unless you get a little bit of additional information about that antiderivative function. You would need to know, for example, a point that that general antiderivative function passes through in order to solve for the value of c. You would start out by saying, well, I know if the derivative is 3x squared, then its antiderivative is x cubed plus c. And if I then go on to tell you, oh, and by the way, your antiderivative passes through the point 0, negative 13, then you could solve for c and say, oh, well, c is negative 13. If I said, find the antiderivative of 3x squared, you'd say, well, it's x cubed plus c. And if I then went on to tell you, oh, by the way, f of x passes through the point 0, 7, then you could solve for c and say that c is equal to 7. So you always will start with saying it has this plus c. In order to find c, you need additional information about that antiderivative function. So we'll do more with that in a minute. So first, we need to understand the basic antiderivative rules. In this class, you will only have to do um, your basic power function rule, exponential function rule, um, logs, but you're not going to go into undoing the chain rule, undoing the product and quotient rule, and so forth. If you go into Calc 2 in the future, you would do more complicated antiderivatives. For now, we're really going to just think about finding antiderivatives of basic power functions, basic exponential functions, and so forth. So our basic three rules here, actually, we have finding the antiderivative of power functions. So this is saying, if you want to integrate x to the n. Notice x in the base and it's raised to a power. So you're integrating a power function, x raised to a power. The antiderivative of x to the n is x to the n plus 1 and then you need to divide away the n plus 1. So you multiply by 1 over n plus 1. So for example, the integral of x squared dx. I have x in the base and it's raised to a power. I'm thinking about this x squared as a derivative of some function and I'm trying to identify what that function is. Integral of x squared dx. If x squared is the derivative, the original function capital F of x must have been an x cubed function. So notice I've taken that exponent 2 and I've added 1. However, if you try to find the derivative of x cubed, you would drop down the 3, you'd get 3x squared. But that's not what we have here. There's not 3x squared, it's just x squared. That 3 out front seems to not be there. It seems to have canceled away somehow. Notice if you add out front here a 1 third, 
Now, when I find the derivative of 1 third x cubed, you'll drop down the 3, it would cancel with the 1 third, and then you would subtract 1 from the exponent. So, also remember to add a c, because the general antiderivative might have a constant added. Let's check this. I'm claiming here the integral of x squared dx is 1 third x cubed. I added 1 on the exponent, and I multiplied out front 1 third. Let's actually check it. Find the derivative of 1 third x cubed. To do that, you'll drop down the 3 out front, so you have 1 third times 3x and you subtract 1 from the exponent, so 1 third times 3x squared. 3 in the denominator cancels with 3 in the numerator, leaving 1x squared, or just x squared. That's what we wanted. We said integrate x squared dx. That's saying find the function whose derivative is x squared. We found it, 1 third x cubed plus c. Let's try one more. We want to integrate x to the negative fifth dx. So the rule says x to the negative 5 is a power function, x in the base, and we have a power in the exponent. The rule says add 1 to your exponent, so negative 5 plus 1 will be negative 4. And then we need to divide away the negative 4 out front. And always, plus c. So the general antiderivative will be negative 1 fourth x to the negative 4. Again, if you're not sure if that's true, go off to the side and check it. When you find the derivative of this function, it should be x to the negative 5. So if I find the derivative of negative 1 fourth x to the negative 4 plus c, drop down the negative 4, so you'll have negative 1 fourth times negative 4 x to the subtract 1 in your exponent, negative 4 minus 1 will be negative 5. A derivative of c, a constant, is 0. 4 in the denominator cancels with 4 in the numerator. Negative times negative is positive. So all we're left with is x to the negative 5. The integral of x to the negative 5 dx is negative 1 fourth x to the negative 4 plus c. Because when we find the derivative of negative 1 fourth x to the negative 4 plus c, we get x to the negative 5. Let's try again. 3, 2. One thing to add on before we do exponentials. If you have a constant multiplied out front of a function f of x, and you integrate a constant times f of x dx, you can actually just pull that constant out front and then worry about integrating f of x dx. Just pull the constant out front and worry about integrating the function. So for example, if I want to integrate 7x to the 6, blah, 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 blah. let's do it for one, 3, 2. So for example, if I want to integrate 7x to the 13th dx, I see that this looks a lot like a power rule problem like we were doing a minute ago. It looks like I'm going to integrate x to the 13th, x raised to a power, the only difference being there's a 7 multiplied out front. What this rule here is telling us is that you can actually just pull that 7 out front multiplied by the integral of x to the 13th dx. So I just pull the 7 out front, kind of cover it up and not worry about it, leave it out front multiplied, and then focus on integrating x to the 13th. So there's a 7 out front times x to the 13th. I want to integrate that. So we add 1 on the exponent, becomes x to the 14th, and then out front I multiply by 1 over 14 so that when we find its derivative it'll cancel away the 14 that gets dropped down. And don't forget, plus c. Overall, then, it's 7 fourteenths x to the 14th plus c, 
and that could simplify as 1 half x to the 14th plus c. There's the general antiderivative. So just pull the constant out front. All right, let's next move on to the next rule, finding antiderivatives of exponential functions. So first of all, the antiderivative of e to the x dx is e to the x plus a constant. Remember, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So it must be the case that the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. Antiderivative of general exponential functions, antiderivative of b to the x, x in the exponent and some number in the base. Again, this is just backwards finding the derivatives of exponentials. Antiderivative of an exponential is itself the original exponential function, and then you need to divide by natural log of the base. Let's try it. Antiderivative of 1.03 raised to the x dx. The answer is the original exponential function, 1.03 to the x, and then we need to divide by natural log of the base. And don't forget, plus c. Let's just check that. We're going to check that by actually starting with our antiderivative and we'll find its derivative. We're going to find the derivative of 1.03 to the x over ln of 1.03. So its derivative. Notice, dividing by ln of 1.03, that's the same as saying out front is 1 over ln of 1.03. And then we have this exponential, 1.03 to the x. When I find the derivative of this function, this is just a constant out front. So I copy the constant out front, because when you find the derivative, you have that constant multiplier still out front. And then I find the derivative of 1.03 to the x. Derivative of an exponential is the original exponential function times ln of the base. And now we see the ln 1.03 in the denominator cancels with the ln 1.03 in the numerator, and we get 1.03 to the x. So the derivative of 1.03 to the x divided by ln 1.03 is just 1.03 to the x. The antiderivative of 1.03 to the x is 1.03 to the x divided by ln 1.03. So to find the antiderivative of an exponential function, it's the original exponential divided by natural log of the base. All right, next rule, the antiderivative of 1 over x. Recall that the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x for x greater than 0. So the antiderivative of 1 over x dx is natural log of x plus c. All right, and this one, the antiderivative of natural log, and here we're going to just focus on x greater than 0. The antiderivative of natural log, this is one you probably should just memorize it. Antiderivative of natural log is x times ln of x minus x. Let me just show you why that is true, but you should just memorize it. You don't aren't going to be expected to like find that and figure it out of why that's true. Just memorize it. If I start with y equals x times ln of x minus x plus c, to find the derivative, y prime, notice here I'm going to need the product rule to find the derivative of x times ln of x. Product rule tells us the derivative is 1 times ln of x plus x times 1 over x, that's the derivative of x times ln of x. And then the derivative of minus x is minus 1. And the derivative of c, of course, is just 0. Doing some simplifying here. y prime is ln of x. The x over x cancels, so this is just plus 1. Minus 1. Plus 1 minus 1 now cancels. And y prime is natural log of x. So if I start with y equals x ln of x minus x, the derivative is ln of x. Therefore, the antiderivative of ln of x dx is 
x ln of x minus x. Last rule is just telling us that if you find the antiderivative of one function plus another function, or one function minus another function, you can find the integral of the first plus the integral of the second, or integral of the first minus integral of the second. In the next video, we'll do a bunch of examples.